Say something, I'm giving up on you. Okay, again, nobody's gonna start my duet for an intro. I'm the guy who invented the thing that's gonna take us out of this place. If you could read my mind, you would know what kind of pajamas I want when it comes to bedtime. Footy, 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 pajamas. Footy, 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 pajamas. Footy, 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 pajamas. They let me be what I want to be. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to another episode of Let Me Pitch This To You. This is episode 10. We hit double digits. And this is an, yet another episode where Ian is out of town with his big boy grown-up job. So filling in for uh, Ian's position as co-host of Let Me Pitch This To You is... Is your podcast. You have to say it. Okay, remember, you got to lean forward a little bit so the mic will pick you up. And you are... Stephanie Brown. That's what you think. No, uh, today filling in for Ian is um, Ashley, my fiance, who apparently forgot her idea. I hope you guys picked... You can't check Facebook. Oh, Go back to the page. We have to read the comment. Why did you think it was okay? I made you turn off your phone for this. Why did you think it was okay to just get on your computer after that? Because when you talk, I usually do other Yeah, she doesn't... See, no, she... Let me explain a little, little something about me and Ashley's relationship. She gets real mad if I do anything while she's talking to me because I'm not actively listening. I did air quotes on that. <laughs> so I'm getting to the video. If I... If she freaking has to sit still for more than a second, she's on her phone checking... Instagram or Facebook. A second. And she has to listen to me. And I have so many notes for my pitch this week. I don't know what she's going to do. Seriously. Why couldn't it be short like your other one? Not all of them are short. Okay, <sighs> so Ashley, can you give them a rundown of what this, this show is? It's an idea podcast. <laughs> what do we do on it? Ideas. Okay, can you give, just, can you please cooperate a little bit? I would if this was a video. Well, I the think. one idea I had was to make this a video, and then when I have to be on it, there's no video. Okay, we'll talk to Ian about that. I'm just saying. Now, again, if we get a house, <laughs> we'll have a recording studio, and all the stuff will stay there. It's fine. Okay, so fine. get on that. <laughs> you or have hey, a if any of our casting voice. If any of our listeners, I'm sorry, if any of our listeners um, want to volunteer a room in their house to be um, open 24-7 at all hours of the day and night for us to come record at, we'd gladly take that. So um, last week, the, um, the votes are in for me and um, uh, Matt's ideas, and Matt, I believe, beat me. I don't have it up uh, on me, but I believe Matt beat me. Probably. I know he beat me, but I believe he beat me four to one. Can't you look? Not off Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so Matt got four votes for his idea about um, the lawyer rabbit and about how um, humans are... Don't look at your phone, please. Okay. Isn't that Facebook anyway? No. Why? I'm sorry. I lost my train of... Can you stop kicking that? Yeah. It's going to pick that mic. It's going to pick it up on the mic. <laughs> can't do anything. Well, honey, let me explain this to you. When I was a kid and I had to listen to stuff, I got stuff to do so I wouldn't get distracted. This is a conversation. You're not having to listen to stuff. You have to talk to another gosh dang human being. But you're talking a lot. Because every time I try to throw it to you, you say... <laughs> That's the equivalent of what you've said to me every time. Closer to a Snapchat filter than my voice. No, again, can you lean in just a little yeah. bit? Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but that's okay. Yeah, I understand. It is very uncomfortable. You're not wrong. That's a good point. You're very right. 
So um, this week, instead of um, Matt doing uh, of doing a ma- Matt's majestic mind, we're going to do Matt's um, wife left a comment um, this time, and Ian also left a comment. So we're gonna give you kind of cliff notes of that because Ian did post a small book. Ashley. Yeah. Are you gonna do that? Oh, no, I just had a question. Oh, what's your question? Why does it say you're trying to wax like they know story? Who said that? It says it on your page. Oh, wax? Like, you never heard, like, we're going to wax philosophical? We're going to talk about it? Act? Fake it? Wax phil- You never heard anybody use that? The sentence doesn't make sense. Read it. No, real quick. Um... Well, we're going to um, introduce a new segment, and it's called um, Ashley Bullies Marcus About Dyslexia. Um, <laughs> keep going, please. This is a great segment, really. Really just let me have it. I don't know why everybody uses this platform as just an opportunity Can I just have my first to minute? bully. No! Don't get... No. No. You can't, actually. It's weird how that works out, how you can't have a loud noisy snack that you don't pre-prepare to not be noisy like I asked you to. I don't want to put them on the outside of the bag where I don't know what it's touched. Okay, not well, disgusting. then you can't have a snack. Then no snack. If you're not willing to, to pre-prepare it to not be no, don't clap in the mic. You're going to read this book now. No. Oh, wait, no, yeah, sorry, we have to continue the bullying me for being dyslexic. Here we go. I'll, I'll read it. How okay. much, do you want me to literally say everything? Um, just kind of read. Said, read. Like, does he say anything funny? One, two. Ian, three, did you say anything five, funny? I don't remember. Six paragraphs. Ian, did you say anything funny in those six paragraphs or particularly interesting? I'll skim it. Ashley's gonna skim it. Um, so real quick, I want to get the stuff out of the way because we almost forgot last episode, so before we jump into this part, we're going to thank um, uh, Tim Schoenfeld for the theme song. Oh, you got his name right. I got his name right on the last one. Suck it. Yeah, but you did it on the one that I listened to. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, jumping into this, the last person was on the show is Matt, dedicated fan, super loyal. Um, up until this podcast, me and Matt has maybe have maybe had um, 15 conversations that were really in-depth in person. <laughs> this is not my fiance. Um, listen to most of one episode... And that's pretty much it. That's our only uh, I diagnosis. I listen to half, three fourths of one and half of another. Oh wow! Look at that. I listen to one twice. So she doesn't know the um uh, the format. So last week Matt actually helped me remember something that I forgot. I can't forget anything this week because she doesn't know the format. <laughs> so um so we we're gonna thank um Tim Schoenfeld for that. We're gonna thank um Matt of course for being an undying um fan. Of the show and liking us more than um, even my own fiance does, and two or sorry three two. The uh, mm-hmm. we're gonna thank Whack Matters for hosting us on iTunes. I'm sorry. Don't do noisy <laughs> things. You know, look at me. Look, you can do just hand gestures. You can move your arms around. You can do all kinds of stuff. If it makes noise, don't do that. Get back on track. We only have this room for an hour. We get no. We can pay two dollars or even four dollars. You think I'm loaded? I'm paying for it. That makes noise. <laughs> Ian, I'm sorry. This is just going to be an audio nightmare for you to edit. He's going to have to actually edit this one. I'm helping him be involved. Jump in to Ian's majestic mind. That doesn't flow. Ian's in-depth... In-depth. in <laughs> Ideas? Maybe? I don't know. Imagination. There you go. That's a good one. Thank you. Well, guys, did you hear that? She actually contributed, finally. Go ahead and read it. Uh, okay. All of it? You were supposed to be skimming while I was saying all that well, stuff to know the interesting parts. Think and read. You weren't supposed to be thinking about what I was saying. You're supposed to be... Do- you but said of- this was a conversation and I had to listen to you. Okay. Yeah, and I told you to skim it. Right, my bad. I'm not gonna read while you're being mean. Okay, Ian, you're gonna have to cut out this long bit of dead, dead silence. But maybe it's entertaining, cause I'm funny. Good one. Thank you. Okay. Here I go. Paragraph one. Chapter one of Ian's <laughs> of Ian's freaking short story. Well, he did say that it's an absurdly long. Co- Marcus! I didn't mean to do that. I can't have I dropped fun. it. Okay. 
I dropped it. You did it on purpose. Because it was fun. Okay. Ian has to follow Matt's footsteps and leave an absurdly long comment about his thoughts. Uh, he likes both ideas and could get behind either one 110%, but here are his thoughts. Mark's idea reminds him of an average stereotypical teenage drama like Boy Meets World, The Wonder Years, Freaks and Geeks, and all of that. He thinks it's interesting that the show would have the arc where the characters are trying to move up the status because normally in these types of shows things happen with not really a set in stone plot. But he likes the idea of this having sort of contest between high school and it gets he probably just did a bad job. He Ian, did you send your short story to an editor? He didn't do a bad job. I just don't know what he's talking about because I didn't listen to it. Yeah, it's fine. I, oh, whoa, you didn't listen to an episode of my podcast. What? <laughs> okay. His one issue is that a lot of shows this reminds him of were from 10 plus years ago, and a lot of them made or at least started through Disney. These type of shows aren't in any way the same for the reason discussed on the show and the shows now he feels like couldn't handle such a plot or maybe the audience couldn't so he doesn't think the demographics are true. That being said, the idea could be a, be a success with perhaps a very niche audience such as himself. He loves these type of shows and he's a sucker for coming of age drama and sitcoms because they're funny. Um... If it's kids that are watching it, they might not get the reference of it being a spoof to Game of Thrones, and it's grown-ups that watch it. He would assume would most likely be Game of Thrones fans, which might not go over well spoofing on the show. On the other hand, spoofs are almost always a, a success. Uh, oh boy, he, that's very long. Freaking. That's only half of it. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it's very long. You didn't even get to Matt's stuff, sorry. I hate. Okay. For Matt's idea, he couldn't help but think of Looney Tunes with the comedy and absurd character interaction and the older style of animation. He doesn't know if that's what Matt was going for, but that's what it reminds him of. He thinks his idea would be great to an early generation. Um, and as he said, with Mark's idea, the demographics aren't there anymore. He doesn't think it sounds like a show out of the 50s or 60s or earlier. When did TV be a thing? Yeah, I don't know. I thought about that when I read this too. <laughs> but then I give Ian the benefit of the doubt because he's smarter than I am. Yeah, so. that's fair. Um, he would watch it and he's sure a lot of people would. And there's still a large cult following of those older type of shows. It's just not the majority. With the kids show, he thinks the main audience would be adults who grew up. Um, with those cartoons anyways. Uh, I can't say that word. Oh. Ian, stop cursing. What the <laughs> frick, Ian? Come on, this is the G-rated show. PG, kind of. You did say a cat molested me. I don't think you can say that on G. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. He thinks most people, like nerds, could jump on board with that and relate to that exact situation. The rabbit sounds like a neat character that you could have a lot of fun writing, especially if you got the right voice actor, who is someone very clever, witty, and smart. It's a great idea. Unfortunately, as discussed in the show as well, I don't think the target audience is quite there anymore. Both were great ideas, but one of you will have to be chopped. And then, can you read Morgan's? This is um, Matt's wife, who, if you remember, I think you said on the last week's podcast, um, he convinced to listen to one episode, which was the one so he I'm was on. So I'm winning. I'm at one point. One point? Thirty-five or something. Yeah. Okay. But she did comment and vote and stuff. I can't vote. So you guys are tied. I feel partial. You guys are tied. Okay, go ahead. She says... She's with Ian on Marcus's show idea because she's seen it done before. And she was homeschooled, so she didn't really understand the drama that high school seems to carry with them. Um, odds are good that most scenarios in this show would go right over her head or would seem illogical. To a person who actually went into a high school, it might make more sense and be relevant. 
Um, she said, Matt already told you all that she's not a fan of the lawyer rabbit idea. To be fair, she originally pictured it as a cartoon rabbit in a live-action show like Space Jam. <laughs> she can't stay on that. Which is weird because she's saying, um, she's talking about Space Jam like it's a bad thing. When Space Jam's clearly a great thing. Which I thought was confusing about her comment. But um, either way, I guess. This is funny. Oh, good. Go ahead. Uh, when he explained the whole story would be animated, she wasn't as disgusted. But it does seem a lot like Looney Tunes, except the unpopular rough episode she didn't like. All that to say, this show is basically an extension of what she hears all the time at her house. Except I really like hearing Matt talk and would like it a lot more if you were talking about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, me and Matt got to relate on a very great, interesting level last episode because we talked about how um, our significant others are so not nerdy in, like, any way. And we're both huge, massive nerds, and they try so hard to be supportive and listen to us talk about nerdy stuff, but really just don't get it. Okay, so who wants to pitch first? You want me to go first? You think you can follow my act? Yes. Oh boy. Okay. And I gotta think of something. Have you? Did you? I told her to write down just her a sentence so she wouldn't forget her idea because she forgot four, not four. four. You forgot I two forgot or three. Three. She forgot three ideas. So I was like, just write a thing down. Nope, not today. Maybe I tomorrow. have. Like, 17 pages. I have, um, uh, the continuation to Ian's short story for my notes this week. Times 10. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Can I close this so I don't get distracted? Yes, close your laptop now, please. Okay, that's a good idea. Also, if you want to, try to think of notes. and I, Or you could even open up Word. Type notes if you have a particular question that you don't think I explained something well. Or you'd be like, I don't get that. Do you have a reason for it? Is it just underdeveloped? So we can... Uh, Make it a discussion. I mean, it could be. I did write this over the course of a few days and didn't really read over what I previously wrote. So we'll see how well this goes. So what you're saying is you're not prepared. Well, cause, well uh, you can't say I'm not prepared. I have, um, oh, a pitch. Yeah, right. That's the, the whole thing about our show. I have that. I have two. So I'm, I have a lot more than two. Okay. This is your podcast. My story starts... With a young boy waking up, um, just panting, very delirious in the woods. He can't remember anything, um, except for the fact that he knows that salt is the answer. Salt? Yeah, salt, as in the seasoning. Am I allowed to talk? Yeah. Okay. You should lean forward so the mic can hear You're you. You're right. Mm. How salt's the answer. Salt. Everybody loves salt. Uh, he sits up and he looks around and he's in a very fantastical, um, fantasy-based forest with very neon-colored trees. <gasps> Um, lots of things kind of, uh, sort of glowing, um, sort of psychedelic trip-esque. Um, he sits up, and the only thing he knows is, uh, he has a very strong sense of urgency. And he knows salt's the answer, looks around, nothing looks familiar to him, and he's like, well, it's kind of a coin toss from here. So, uh, this young guy picks a direction and starts, starts running. He's, I, I gotta get, I gotta get the secret answer of salt. To somebody, somewhere. Um, after that, we cut to um, a kingdom full of um, scared people, and it looks... Uh, it looks like an area that had once been inhabited and very happy. A lot of open courtyards, a lot of um, people getting along, um, fair trade and everything going on, and then uh, recently has been sort of makeshift turned into a lot of bunkers and boarded up windows... Uh, kind of like it's been it's been a, a town and a castle under siege for a long time. Supplies look low. Uh, people are kind of out and about doing chores, but there's not a lot of um, hustle and bustle sounds. Just a lot of sounds of work, not really conversation going on. Uh, when the, um, the you hear the crowd start whispering about how first werewolves started attacking and they had to deal with this big werewolf problem and then vampires and then wendigos and then um, wraiths and now demons are attacking them and you uh, you sort of sh shortly learn 
through just some whispered conversations here and there about how over the past six years-ish, they've just been getting wrecked by these different mythical beasts. Like, they just kind of roll through, and eventually they they rise to the occasion and they find a, a clever solution to to defeat them. So eventually they find the uh, they find the silver to kill the the werewolves. They realize oh silver kills these things. Let's use that. They find the, the sunlight and the garlic and that kind of thing to kill the vampires. And then make up something cool for wraiths and wendigos. I don't know about those. Um, too much. Uh, as you kind of learn this through just some whispered conversations going on for these kind of just peasant farmer folk working, trying to get their chores done, um, we see a cart um, dragging, or not drag, um, we see a horse and a, a buggy kind of coming in and some knights that all looked very discouraged. And we learn that the uh, hero uh, knight of this realm, a man named Edward Richmond, was uh, bitten by... Um, one of the demons that they've been facing. What? What is that face about? Why is is it such a bad idea already? You already hate this. I didn't know demons could bite. Okay, I'm sorry. Was slashed by the demon claws of one of the demon foes. <laughs> and due to this, um, seems to he's not dying as much as he's. He seems to have lost most of his hope. He seems to be a very Captain America-esque character, and people talk about him that way as uh, he thinks forwards, and he's always trying to be positive and lead people, but kind of just his hope's been, been taken away since the slash. Like, the evilness of these demons just took all hope away. Uh, as we learn about this, um, about Richmond and about the the people that they've been um, sort of facing and having to deal with. They wait a second. I lost where I am in my notes. You're on like the second sentence. It'll start going faster. I have to set up the whole kind of ordeal and also read through my notes. Cause I don't remember all of it. Um, he then has a meeting with the king. And he talks to them. He's like, hey, we're going to get overrun. There's a lot of demons. We don't know the secret to beating these ones. We don't even know if there is a secret to beating these ones. Like, we got to get the frick out of here. And, and they sort of argue about that. And they know that it's a risky move because there's so many of them. And because that will make them so vulnerable. And there's so few knights left after these six year worth of sieges sort of going on but they know that they can't stay in the kingdom the castle is no longer defendable everybody knows where it is they need to go somewhere that's more batten down the hatches and sort of just fight till they either leave us alone or we die essentially so they start to leave we then cut back to our uh to the kid um uh, the kid? We don't know the kid's name yet. I have a really kind of dumb thing to figure out his name. Um, the kid is running and he, he um, eventually starts to get chased by, by some demons in the forest. And as he's running, he um, falls into this cave with these weird um, white looking kind of stalactites and stalagmites. In it, and he falls into to this puddle. You know what those are? Those are the big spike things that form in caves for hanging from the ceiling from Stalactites. the ground. Oh, what do you say? What did you say? Stalactites and stalagmites. Okay. Sorry. okay. Sorry. Um. And he falls into this body of water, and as the demon chases him, touches the water, and, and it seems to burn him. The person or the The demon. So the demon leaves, and the kid's like, okay, water. So the kid opens up, um, uh, he, ha he has an extra water skin. He fills it up, he's like, I know this isn't fresh water, but I, I now have something to combat these demons with. Um, we're going to uh, then cut to the, um, the kingdom that's now moving, and we see 
just this massive group of, group of people. I know you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. In the second Lord of the Rings movie, um, when all the orcs are marching to Helm's Deep, I want people to like think of that scene. Like, there's just an obscene amount of people. Like, there's so many people moving. And I want, like, and it's very important because their numbers are going to get kind of knocked down a few pegs as time goes on. As they're sort of walking through this, um, they stop to get to the water hole, and the, um, only place, the only place that has fresh water that they can stop at, essentially, not the only place, but the, only, the next closest place. And uh, there's a huge group of barbarians there that sort of just run through and start kind of just killing people, right? Just kind of cutting down the numbers. And the knights do everything they can to kind of get rid of the barbarians. And, and there's just a kind of a huge massacre as we see some just women, children, men, farmers, people who are sort of defenseless just get wrecked through this. And as this is going on and as... Um, uh, Edward and sort of the other knights start to fight and do what they can to go to these barbarians. Um, we get kind of a skirmish going on there. It cuts again to, um, to our kid. And, um, wait a second. Um, he sees another demon and... Um, as the demon chases him, he throws that water he had in his pouch at him, and the demon gets burned and, and leaves him alone, and he finds a nearby spring and, and fills up his, his water skin again for the next time he has to face a demon, and he, he continues on, and he sees another group of demons and throws the water at them, and this time the water doesn't work. The water doesn't really, um, seem to affect them at all, besides they got wet, right? So he starts to run away. And it cuts back, and we see Edward kind of at the aftermath of these barbarians. They killed enough of the barbarians, and they kind of just ran through killing who they could. And when they got to the end of these people, they left. They kind of just disappeared. And Edward is now arguing with the king about um, Edward thinks that they need to move on. They need to not bury the dead. They need to grab what supplies they still have, fill up on water as fast as they can, and continue marching because they were so vulnerable out here, and the king thinks it's more important to keep the morale of the people up and give all these humans a, a proper bur proper burial. And they they do so. They end up giving them proper burial and filling up the water skin, and, and nobody, nothing really that bad happens. And sort of as we see that kind of progress, we cut back to the kid, and he he's kind of bloodied up. He's got some scars. He's clearly been in a fight and got wrecked. But he, he's alive. He managed to dispatch the demons some way, shape, or form. And as he's sort of walking and his clothes are tattered and stuff and he lost some of his supplies, he sees a spruce tree and he says, huh, weird. And, and I want you to think like a regular spruce tree, not like these fantasy trees that we've been seeing that's from just one solitary spruce tree. And he's like, huh, oh. Bruce, right? Bruce runs with Bruce. He's like, that's my name. He remembers his name. No, it's, there's a whole thing about it, okay? Whew. Cut again back to Edward. And this time, we kind of get this sense that a little bit of time has passed, but there's, um, there's an illness going through the camp. And these people are dying, and they don't think that there's a way that they can sort of fix it or help it. So what they do is they have, um, they make those people travel a good, like, eight hours behind them on foot. And if you start to show signs of getting infected, they're like, well, maybe you'll live through it, maybe not. But we can't risk you infecting the other people, so they send them eight hours back. And this sort of goes to show that, uh, Edward's morale drops more and more and more. And as it does, the, uh, the slash mark on his arm gets darker and grosser looking. Um, Edward volunteers to go back and stay with the um, with the sick people, though. He said they still need guards in case some of them live through it. So he volunteers to be one of those people, and they have people who run back and forth to deliver messages so they can still communicate with each other. 
We then cut back to Bruce um, in the woods, and he's getting chased by another demon, and the water's still not working, and he ends up getting kind of put up in this weird hole, and the demon rears back to um, kill him, to shoot him with fire, and he um, sort of puts up his hand, and um, the fire bends around him, sort of. Maybe, we'll see. Um, he waits out the, the demon there, and he's very scared at first, but after a few more blasts of fire and him blocking the fire a few more times, he, he's the demon can't reach him, so he's, he sort of just waits him out, and uh, we kind of see his, his fear go away. We cut back to the, um, the uh, kingdom, to the group of people moving, and Edward gets nervous because the... Um, the only people, or, because they haven't heard the, me the messenger hasn't been there in a long time. So he speeds up the group of everybody and he doesn't let them sleep. He's like, we, we gotta see what's going on. The messenger's not communicating with us anymore. And he gets up and he finds that everybody who was the eight hours ahead of them, the king and all of them, massacred. They're all dead. The king's dead. All those women, children, soldiers, all of them are dead. Now the only people who are alive are these unhealthy, sickly people. They're very close to the destination, however. He starts to push them more to where he thinks they need to go. And about this time, um, Bruce emerges from the woods and sees these massacred people and sees these sick people sort of being okay. Or uh, not being okay, but being at least alive. And he approaches them, and Edward's very skeptical and, and doesn't like Bruce because uh, uh, Bruce is very optimistic and young, and um, especially now after, after this sort of curse that is brought on Edward um, goes, he's very dark and cynical and uh, sort of lost all hope, but still trying. But uh, over time, as they march, the, these people start to get better, and they, they think, okay, th this flu's gone away. And they get to their destination from that point without a whole lot of um, more problems. No demons really attack, no more barbarians. And they're set up in this kind of rocky mountain area to where they're covered from all sides except for one entrance. And they have a decent enough wall there to where they, they think, we can defend this fairly well and we'll make do and live as long as we can. About a year goes by. And the demons have been a problem every now and then, but for the most part, they haven't attacked a whole lot. And then we see one demon, one werewolf, one wraith, one wendigo, and if there's anything else that I said before, one vampire, approach this town sort of at dusk, this new settlement. And they're waving a white flag. And the werewolf is losing his mind as they sort of parlay and talk to each other. And he he keeps saying that they're screwed. They're all they're all dead. He's like, we're all good as dead. And he's panicked. And and they're trying to ask and figure out why. And they tell him, they say, well, nothing else has worked. Why not communicate this to them? And we learn that all these creatures are from a different plane of existence. And each of these planes have been destroyed by a horrible winged creature. Or horrible winged creature, sorry. And the reason that they stopped in this plane and didn't keep running was they saw something special in humans. They said, humans, you seem so weak and fragile, especially compared to us. We have all these abilities and things. But they say, you have one thing that we don't have. You can do magic. So you have the ability to be a magician. You, you can do these, these ridiculous things. And they said, and we tried to talk and explain these things to humans, and they either thought we were monsters, they wouldn't listen, or they would try to perform um, these feats and use these magical powers, and it never worked. They never could. They always fell short, and because of that, we thought that maybe the only thing that we could do 
was to put you in a position where you had to use magic. You had no choice but to. So we took our turns using our own ranks, using our own men to attack you, but you you never did. You never learned magic. You you were clever and you were creative and you did find a way around it because you always do. You you pesky humans are are if nothing else resourceful. And you found uh, natural weaknesses that we all have to things on, on your plane of existence. But we come to you talking now that these winged creatures are going to start coming soon. And we need you to learn how to use magic and fight because there's not really any other plane of existence that we know of and we've been looking that can support life. We don't have anywhere else to run. This is the end of the road. And as they're, as they're talking and explaining this, a trumpet sound goes off. And within the blink of an eye, we see angels pouring out of the sky with these huge swords. And they start destroying everything. They start murdering more people. They're more vicious than the barbarians. They're more vicious than the demons. They're just wrecking shop. And you hear these creatures say, this is it. They destroyed all of our planes. This is the last plane for them to destroy. And they sort of just peace out at this point. And Edward... Now seeing everything in such a hopeless state, but by this time, over the last year, his, his wound sort of healed. He then springs into action in a way that he hasn't in so long, knowing that he has to try. And as these creatures sort of leave, they, they get a little bit impressed, because nobody had really been able to cross blades with one of these angels before, one of these creatures. But Edward's very good with the sword. And he does very good for a decent amount of time as he rallies men around him and fights and, and does battle with them. And it is a valiant effort. But just before he dies, or almost dies, as he's about to get hit with a blast of, of some sort of radiant heat, Bruce bends it around them. Bruce is standing above him and bends the radiant heat around them. He uses magic. And then as Bruce thinks why he can do this, he remembers everything. And by this time, all of the creatures are gone. And he looks at Bruce and he says, Bruce, or he looks at, sorry, he looks at Edward and says, Edward, we have to survive this first round of attacks from these angels. I need you to do that. And then after that, I need you to leave these people. I need you to go and rally the monsters because we're going to need their help. There's too few of us now. And then he leaves. He runs back and he runs back heading towards the woods. And despite all odds, Edward manages to keep enough of the humans alive and survive the first volley of attacks from the angels. And he listens to Bruce. He goes... And he gives um, a beautiful speech to these monsters, and we sort of get this um, contrasting monologue because by this time, Bruce is back at that spruce tree, and he's talking to it, and he says, I remember everything now. I remember you were going to get burnt down and destroyed, and... I stopped people from doing that because you were unique and special. And it wasn't until now that I realized what you were and what these angels were and how you you wanted to be close to us. And without your rule, they became vicious and angry, but they didn't know where you were. So they started to murder and kill in hopes that they would destroy you and be truly free to never be stopped again. Well, I need you to have faith in humanity because I know that you granted me the ability to not do magic, but perform miracles. 
I need you to do that to humanity. I don't remember the old ways of how we worshipped you and and how you were were our deity, but I I know that you gave me the ability to do miracles because I stopped people from burning you down. And I know that, that was such a, a mind boggling thing that when I was given that ability I blacked out and I couldn't remember. But I need you to give everybody else that power. I need you to save the world and stop these angels from destroying you and destroying all of us. And, and as this speech is given, we also hear Edward giving his speech to the monsters. And he rallies them. And as the angels come back down for their second volley of attacks, this time they're not being whimsical. They're not playing around or um, sort of doing this haphazardly. They're using strategy and they're using tactics and skill. They've done this before. It's not their first time destroying a plane and committing genocide. And as all hope begins to be lost, a sort of blue light echoes throughout the kingdom and everybody starts to glow. And Edward feels stronger than he has in forever. And he flies. And Edward leads with these monsters and these other humans who are also imbued with this power and are performing miracles in this battle against the angels. And they win. They defeat the angels. They kill every last one of them. And things settle down. And the last shot of this movie is we see bloody roots of a spruce tree. And we sort of pull back. And we see the human sacrifice that was given to this deity to grant miracles to the human race. That's the end of my story. Did he kill the tree? No, the tree's alive. He killed himself. Who killed himself? Bruce killed himself as a sacrifice to the spruce tree to give everybody else to let everybody else perform miracles. He killed himself for a tree. For God, baby. We don't know. Tree. Maybe it was God. God's tree. Maybe the God in this fantasy tree, or in this fantasy world, is a tree. You need to lean forward so the mic can hear you can better. Do you have any questions? Did you write questions? You were typing. Or were you typing your pitch? Did you think of something? No, I typed two questions. What were I they? Found cool I what were the questions? Um. Is it all fantasy world except that tree? Like fantastical and magical and old school? Yeah. Like everything would exist. And, and, and the Lord of the Rings meets Harry Potter-esque world. That's not fantasy. Harry Potter's fantasy. No, oh, you made it sound like Dr. Seuss trees. Yeah. That's fantasy. Weird. Whimsical. Okay. Yeah, Not sure. Like magic. Oh, um, I mean, but it's both. yeah, very, very so both, like very the high. Lorax. Very, yeah, the Lorax. Um, the Lorax trees. But yeah, think it's yes, very years no, years. very yeah, very much think those trees, except for, um, think of something so whimsical and high fantasy feeling like that, but, but dark and gritty. Like Harry Potter gets, like the world of Lord of the Rings. Harry Potter meets the Lorax meets Pocahontas. Sure. Do you have Do you have any other questions? Why are they angels? Well, the um the god in this world wanted to be closer to humanity, and he made himself into a beautiful, wonderful tree that's unlike anything else, and so it was Pocahontas. a regular spruce tree. And the angels, without rule, um, sort of realizing that God was vulnerable and that they would have maybe the opportunity to, to kill him, and realizing he made this choice, wanted to do that. But they didn't know what plane of existence he went to, so they went through destroying and murdering every single plane until they got to the last one. And it just so happened to be the one that the deity went to. Okay. Now we take a commercial break. Oh, a nap. I'm sorry, my story put you to sleep. 
Um, I'm sorry. Um, not this week, but starting next week, I'm going to start writing jingles for our commercial break. No, Bye. do it now. Okay, you ready? Hey, everybody. This is an idea podcast. Do, 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 do. Hey, everybody. We need money for a house slash studio. If you would be so kind to share this with your friends and you would oblige us by um, having them vote and participate so we could build a following and get sponsors. Not only so that me and Ashley could live in a house together at some point and I could do this full time and not have to get a grown up job, but also to help Ian in some way, shape, or form. So please give us money and oblige us. Now, to Ashley's pitch. Go for it. Okay. Lean forward. Can we scooch it towards me? No. Why do I have to conform to a alien? It's a mic. It's like an alien. I'm going to lean back a little bit and talk a lot less. No, talk like a lot because I don't have much. I mean, I'll ask lots of questions if you... Okay, that's bad audio. It hurt all of that. But it hit... No, I'm going to I'm gonna make... Put earbuds, because the earbuds still pick up the mic. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to shake the mic around like you just did, and that's what people are going to hear. Go ahead. Take it away. Okay. Lean forward. Okay. What's your pitch? I'm thinking. Did you not come up with no, anything? No, I got two. I'll start. Wait a second. I gotta let you all prepare yourself. Oh, is it gonna? Is it gonna blow our mind? Wake up from your podcast and get prepared for. I mean, idea. This whole Go. thing's a podcast. Oh, here we go. Go get your snacks and be ready for the second half of the show. That probably won't be as long as the first half because Marcus talked an absurdly for long minutes, amount of time. I watched the clock. Hey, I got very into this idea. Why does everybody else get snacks and I just want one, just one snack, fruit snack to get me through this? I want to pick, you don't the, get color. To pick the color. Marcus. That's not one. You grabbed, you grabbed a bunch, you liar. Okay, now start talking. Okay, so it's an idea about a podcast. Oh boy. How to make a good podcast. Okay, so you'd be, you'd be making a podcast that would explain to other people how to make a good one. Yeah. Okay. Continue. How do you do that? Well, there would always be a video. Okay. So, quick question. Mm -hmm. I might cut you off here. Is your whole thing just going to be roasting me and Ian's podcast? No. Okay. Go Look, for it. It looks like a heart. Oxygen and deoxygenated. That's a good point. Too bad this isn't video and you did make a video That's reference. That's what I'm saying. Okay, well, continue. So, video if all the time. If this would have been a video, everybody would have seen what I just said. Okay. That was gross. Okay, would you I rather me drooled on the floor? <laughs> a freaking fruit snack. Okay, I don't need to talk to you about my eating habits. Okay, where was I? Video all the time. Okay, we sh you should write this down. Just... And it's, we're recording it, so we'll have it for forever. Oh. <laughs> it's going on the World Wide Web. Okay. Two. You have to be funny. Okay. So, question. Mm -hmm. Here's a fun thing we can do. I want you to kind of give me and Ian check marks on our podcast. Or give us what? an out of ten. No, give us a one through ten. Ten being the best. One being the worst. And where we are on this scale of... Good podcast name. There's there's categories. Yes, for each category. So for the oh, video can only. Can I finish the category? Oh, video. Like a four. Because we have some video. Okay, so a four. That, I think that's a little generous because I think we only have three video episodes. But they're all off centered. Your camera's off centered. No, I was saying I think four is a little too high of a number. 
Because we have ten episodes, and only three of them okay, are video. that's fine. But I'm talking about the three video ones, you get a four. For quality. A four for quality, but and just an overall four video all the time, what's our rating for that? Like a one. Okay, that's what I, I was expecting more something like that. Yeah, ouch. And we'll add all these up. Okay, okay go for it. What's the So, um, what was the next one? Funny? Or me and Ian funny? The cat was funny. <laughs> the cat was funny? Okay. So, um, but me and Ian, when we make jokes on the podcast, from what you've heard. Four. Oh boy, Ian. We got some work to do. Okay. What's the next step? So, wait a second. We're at three right now. I can't do math. We're at five right now. <laughs> I'm going to keep tracking okay, of this. Okay, number three. You have to have Snapchat video filter things for your voice. That's factually wrong. That's factually true. Okay, so where are me and Ian on that? Zero. Okay, so Negative. we're still... Negative. How many episodes do you got? This is episode 10? Negative 20. 20? Okay, so we're at negative 15 right now. Oh boy, Ian. Okay. Anything Don't else? say that every time. Oh no, I'm gonna say it all the time. Okay. Okay. Hold on, I'm trying to. I don't... Do you remember what else I've complained about? I mean, given suggestions about. Mm-hmm. You can't eat on your podcast. That sucks. People like snacks. Okay, you. When you're recording the podcast, cannot eat. Why? If you're listening to the podcast, you can eat all you want. Hold on. You never said anything about what salt meant in that. I just remembered. It was implied. What? Salt hurt the demons. Oh, like salt water? Huh. I get it. They never... He never figured it out. Well... All the way. He never remembered that but part. But the demons weren't the problem. Yeah, but the he, they thought were. the demons were. So he killed those for no reason. Murderous. He Well, I mean, the demons were trying to murder him, and he was trying not to get murdered, so. Go ahead. Okay. Do you have anything else? Does, does it need to have music? A podcast? Like, background music that plays? Like You know what would be funny? Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you seen that video of that guy who reads the funny tweets? Yeah. <laughs> How he, like, cuts the video and puts funny pictures or, like, edits funny. Mm-hmm. I've, I've talked to Ian about that, and I believe his exact words were, no. Negative seven for the negativity. Negative oh, boy. What is that at, then? Well, what's 15 plus seven? I don't know. Negative 22. Okay, Ian. I think we should quit. And I don't think that bringing Ashley on here was a great idea because she did she is telling everybody that this is a very very bad podcast no no it has hope okay so what categories are we just knocking out of the park to at least get us to not negatives consistency consistency oh yeah well see that's a big one because we're so consistent that sometimes I don't hang out with Ashley and she gets frustrated with me I don't I know that's not true I was kidding so you can have 10 plus 10 which equals... Don't get your calculator. I'm not getting a calculator. I don't know what you're talking about. Negative 12. It was 22. But negative, thir- or, uh, negative 13. It was 22. We're at 22. Negative 12. Cool. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 20. You. Two. Okay. Okay. We're at negative 12. Is there any other benchmarks? Anything else we're knocking out of the park or really killing it? You have... What's the word? Advertisement? We have advertisement? No, we don't. Who's advertising us? I mean, you have social media. This is what I meant. Oh, okay, yeah. We're out there in every sense of the word. And you followed me on all social media, so that's cool. Okay, where does that put us at? You can be at zero. Okay. Ian? You break an even. Get your hopes up. We might we might end positive. Anything else? You're hopeful. We're hopeful? I mean 
Yeah, sure. I think this is a very unique idea that is unlike any other podcast I know about. Anything else? What what does that put us at? Where do you want it to put you at? It's up to you. I'm not making this scale. I'm not pitching the idea of making a podcast about good podcasts. We're going to get into this later. We're not After we're done roasting my podcast. Your fruit snacks are touching mine. I don't care, hon. Gross. gross. I hate those things. <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. That's all you got? Okay. I have a real thing, but I was just, oh no. You do? Okay. What's your real idea? No, then? you had to something to say. I was like, if you, no, I was saying, if you wanted to do that, we could talk about the logistics of your podcast. If you wanted My to, act, podcast? if you wanted to actually, in theory, pitch this podcast where you evaluate other podcasts on a certain base of no, criteria. I don't like to be mean. Okay, so what's your actual idea? <sighs> it's stupid because I couldn't remember my real one. So. There's a wedding going on upstairs. Sozo Jeez. is a little less quiet than uh, usual. Okay. But so we apologize for that. I don't even think they can hear it. They probably can. The mic's super sensitive. So I couldn't think of a good one because I forgot it. It's okay. Sometimes mine are very bad. Yeah. So it's super like... What's that word? Basic or extra? No. Generic? I guess. For this era. Okay. If you call this an era... But it's like a TV show of a TV show. Um, kind of like Thirty Rock is a TV I've show never about. Seen that. Thirty Rock is a TV show about them. They do like an essentially imagine SNL, so it's about like each episode is about them getting their every single night like SNL yeah. show ready. Mm-hmm. So what kind of TV show? It's a TV show about people watching a TV show. Oh. Like, what? Like, okay, so they're required to watch this show okay. by, like, I don't know, whoever's in control at the time, like, government or whatever, king or whatever, I don't care. But they have to watch this show every day at a certain time. Or what? I'll get to that. Okay. It's an interactive show. Okay. So it's kind of like future in the sense that like they can interact with a TV show, but not like super future like flying cars type of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just weird TV show. Okay. And it's like a different genre of TV show every day, but like they have to always interact with it or things will happen to them and based on the way that they respond to the scenarios different things will happen to the people does that make sense the things will happen to the people watching or the people in the show watching okay so interact yeah so if you interact good with the tv show like positive outcomes happen yeah or just not negative things yeah okay it depends so like depending on how you respond to the show. I'm trying to think. It's okay. How I said it earlier. See, I ran this by mom and dad to try to get ideas, but they didn't understand how this worked at all. So they were trying to get me to, like, legit tell stories about, like, my childhood or something. Or, like, storybook stories, so they kind of confused. Okay. They really dropped the ball on that. Yeah, they weren't any help at all. It's okay. One time as a joke, I pitched the idea of Spider-Man. You didn't hear that episode. No, I didn't. Okay, anyways. So, like, if it was, like, a, like, typical, like, NCIS show or something, whatever that is, like. Crime drama? Yeah, like a crime show, depending on how they, like responded to certain aspects of the show if they responded how like this power of government thing wanted them to they would get like safety or better things in life or like opportunities to work with this powerful government if they responded how the government like didn't like they could just be punished 
Or had... With stabs? I don't know. Stab, 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 stab. They could just be punished or, like, have to, like, live in solitude because they're then, like, the outsiders or whatever because they didn't agree with the majority. Mm-hmm. Or if they, like, wouldn't interact or interacted in the worst possible way, they would just be killed on the spot. Okay. Like, sniped. Here's my question. So... Is there, like, an overarching, like, story to this about, like, a group of people trying to overthrow the government? Or is it literally just this world and people getting murdered or people interacting and these lives that they do or do not have based on how they interact with this TV show? It'd be like it would go to each, like, a bunch of different people and you just kind of follow their journey, I guess. Hmm. To see, like... If they were, like, depending on their answers, like, how close are they to, like, dying or getting, having good things happen to them. But you'd follow a few. I don't know. So it would kind of be like a reality show in a reality show in a death murder game. Yeah. I like that. I'm not mad at it. Like, that's definitely a neat idea. I don't know how to explain it well. I don't know any other questions to ask about it. Because it wasn't in depth. Because I don't know how to make it in depth. Well, I mean, you could have um, maybe worked on it longer than 20 minutes. It was longer than that. I'm kidding. I don't know. How yeah. else do you explain that? Nobody's going to understand it. I understand it. If you don't understand it, email it us. Before you vote. Before you I vote, I'll win. explain it to you. I don't like to lose. That is fair. I hope I win. I spent a lot of time on this, guys. I did too. Really, it just consumed me. <laughs> but, okay, so a um, few things we want to hear back from you. I thought of this. I was curious. What was? What's your guys' favorite pitch that you've heard? This one that I just did. Yeah, whether it's in... I mean, like, not... If, if it's not... the fact that I couldn't come up with a way to say it and just think about the fact that it was a good idea. I mean, hey, maybe, sometimes... Probably not. Everybody likes you. No. No, I'm pretty sure... I'm gonna get... Ian and Matt, I think, of one more time than I have. I'm gonna get every friend or every person I know to watch it. Just for me. Good. That will bring... You'll promote our show better than you ever have before. Um, I'm kidding. as a joke. Um, uh, no, so, um, email in and tell us or leave a comment anywhere. You don't have to necessarily email us. Just, what's been your favorite idea you've heard from the first 10, 10 episodes of our show. I'm curious. I'm, I thought about that the other day. Um, don't forget to vote, and you can vote at let me pitch this to you at gmail.com. Um, uh, where can you find where can you find Ashley? Where you can find my fiance Ashley on um, social media? Everywhere. But under what? What's your Twitter name? I don't have any clue. What's your Instagram name? I don't know. I'm just, I have it. You want me to look? Yeah, look real quick. I'm not allowed to use my phone. Look real quick. Good one. Um, you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at Afrothunda. Um, you I can, think it's just AK Nick 97 I mean, we can look. Let's just make sure. Um, you can find um, the Facebook page on... You can also find the um, Facebook page of the show. On Facebook. On Facebook and oh. at just... <laughs> Um, let me push this to you. You can find us on Instagram at let me push this to you. And you can find us on Twitter at the official, I and mean, what are the initials to our podcast are? What is it? Um, L-M-P-T-T-Y. Because Ian thought that that wasn't a mouthful. A-K Nick 97. Alright, yeah, you can find Ashley at Instagram at A-K Nick 97 and also that on Twitter. Really everything, I yeah, think. Pretty much all social media. Um, yeah, so reach out, leave a comment. Some people... Um, they voted, but also, like, explained why they voted in their, in their email, and, um, we don't always have time, because this is running longer than a lot of our episodes have, so we don't always have time to talk about everybody's comment like we do Matt's, but we, we do read all of them, and I do enjoy reading those, so thank you for that, thank you everybody who did vote, um, thank you Matt for embarrassing me on the internet again, I think Matt emailed in and said that he would vote for mine. He like or you no, know, yeah, Matt did say he liked my idea better and would have voted for me last week. So in a way 
I kind of got two votes. Well, he couldn't vote. He was on the show. In a way, I got two votes. But, I'm going to vote for myself. Um, I still lost. Oh, I, that'll be Ashley's first time voting. And I'll win. And you said you, were Im- you, said you wouldn't vote because you, uh, you, know, you were impartial. I didn't want to be rude or impartial. But you will be rude and impartial to vote for yourself? No, that's just selfish. <laughs> okay. Um, let me know about what you think about me improvising songs for our commercial break. I think that it could be a lot of fun, and I think when people do that, it's hilarious, and maybe I'll get good at it. Maybe. Here's an idea. Okay. For a tally of everybody who's won, so you know who's won the most. Oh, yeah, I, already, I have that in the thing. Yeah, but you didn't say it to these people. Well, I want to impl- I don't want to talk about stuff that um, is going to happen in the future, because we don't know when it'll get implemented. <laughs> but it was my idea. Yeah, and I'll tell them that. When we get there, I'm gonna wrap up. I'm gonna wrap up the show. Thank you for listening to the Idea Podcast. Let me pitch this to you. Um, We'll be back next week. I've been Marcus Snip, and oh, real quick, I also have just one more thing. I'd like to um, also apologize. This is the first time we got just like a super attractive person on uh, an episode. And uh, it's not a video episode, which really sucks. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, I've been um, Marcus Snip, and um, thank you for being a guest uh, host. Mm-hmm. Please say your name. I don't like saying my name. Say your name, please. Play your saying It's your podcast. With um, uh, the guest host of Anus Farts. Thanks for listening. When I-